As a kid, I was terrified of, we had like a, like a laundry room and I was always scared to go in there because the dryer would make weird noises and I thought it was a monster. When I was younger, I had a fear of garbage disposals. Uh, for good reason, they're terrifying. Um, but I saw this movie once where a woman uh, like shrunk down and accidentally fell into a garbage disposal and that just freaked me out. I was very scared of pizza. I was very scared of pizza because there were so many layers that I didn't understand. So like if I pulled the cheese up, I would like back off and be like, ah, what is that? So I didn't eat pizza until I was like 10 and now I love it. <laughs> the first pizza my mom ever brought home was in everything. And I was like, why is there so many things? <laughs> I was always scared of wasps and like bees and stuff because I was afraid they were gonna chase me and kill me. All right, the dark definitely scared me for a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually, this was kind of freaky. I remember one night waking up and I swear I saw these like big yellow eyes coming from the bathroom. I didn't use that bathroom for like a week. So yeah. I was definitely afraid of getting my picture taken. I don't know why, but um, in every family picture, everyone had their faces and you can only see the back of my head. I was always afraid of walking on the tiles, like the grooves, because of the saying, like, step on a crack and break your mama's back. <laughs> and I didn't want to break my mom's back, so I just made sure I always stepped on the tile and not the groove. I was afraid that my toys would come alive like Toy Story did, and they would hang out in my room. I was afraid that I was going to slip on a banana peel and crack my head open so I wouldn't eat bananas. I was afraid of bananas because in TV shows, you always saw like characters slipping on banana peels and going to the hospitals. I have a lot of fears in my life now. I fear failing. I fear making a lot of mistakes because I feel like a lot of people will be disapproving of the way that I live because the older I've gotten, the more I've realized that people in my life expect me to conform and be a certain image. I'm afraid of the ocean because there's so many like living things in the ocean and it's like so deep and like it just freaks me out. Like I love the ocean from the beach. I just don't like the idea of being like out in the middle of the ocean. Spiders, I can't do spiders. If the spider's like the size of a quarter, I mean, I'll be freaked out and I'll kill it, but if it's like fist-sized, like, no, somebody else can do it. Definitely public speaking. My biggest fear probably is of the unknown. I don't like taking risks because if I don't, like, because I don't know what's gonna happen if I take the risk. I'm scared of like not fulfilling like my potential. Like I know God's plan, but at the same time, like, I'm scared I won't fulfill it like living up to what I'm supposed to be doing. Being alone. I just feel uns like not safe. I feel like if there's people around me, I'm safe because they can protect me. Okay, well, I'm gonna be a senior this year. Um, gotta think about college and think about what I wanna do with my life and trying to find that direction. That's a hard thing, um, it's a scary thought. Uh, another thing is that I have a lot of expectations placed on my shoulders and one of my biggest fears is letting everybody down, so. I think I'm afraid of failing because I'm afraid of like not being successful when like I'm older. Like even though I'm young, I sometimes like tend to worry about the future when I shouldn't. It's like I'm worried too much about not being successful. I deal with that fear by studying God's word and being truly implanted in him and knowing who I am and identifying myself with him. And if I'm living a way that isn't offensive to my God, why should I care how other people view me? I try to like get into a mindset of like, um, God already has everything planned out for me and I just need to trust that instead of worrying about it all the time. And things just felt great. Um, anytime I just overcome a fear, or do something scary and whenever you do it, it just feels amazing. And I mean, I think fear is not always a bad thing. I think that if we're not getting scared every now and then, then we're probably not doing what God's called us to do. I think sometimes we got to find comfort in being uncomfortable. 
I pray and then I just go to my friends for encouragement so they can boost me and help me feel better. I mean, I give it to God. I know that I did everything that I possibly could. Um, and if I didn't, then I know that that's something I need to fix. Um, but if I do end up letting somebody down and I gave everything I could, I mean, I can't hold on to that. Like, it'll make me feel crappy for a little bit, but give it to God and move on. Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you're doing really well. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic time, you know, getting lots of stuff done, uh, lots of family time. Um, I hope you're learning lots. Uh, it's a good time to do that. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you're afraid of? What are some of your fears? Uh, when I was younger, one of the things that I was afraid of uh, was, a sh was sharks. So I would be so scared of swimming in the ocean, um, I would think that a, a shark would come and grab my leg and drag me under to eat me. Uh, but luckily, I'm still here, obviously, so that hasn't happened, uh, so that's a good thing. Um, but yeah. So we are in the second week of the storm series, and today we're going to be talking about a hailstorm. Um, it's probably one of the biggest hailstorms. Um, we're talking about the hailstorm that was in the Ten Plagues in Egypt, in Exodus. Um, so, you know, we know that this happened because the Pharaoh did not want to let the Israelites go. So, um, you know... We all know when Moses returned um, to Egypt after all those years of being away, um, you know, God had spoken to him and he told him, you are going to lead my people out of Egypt. Um, and so obviously Moses was uh, pretty scared, not ready for this, but God told him that he would be with him. Uh, so God told Moses, the Pharaoh was not even going to listen, but God would make everyone see and understand he was and still is the one and true God. So the first few plagues were pretty gruesome, but they weren't a lot of effort for God. I mean, this was this was easy stuff for God. He wasn't he wasn't trying so hard. Um, the Bible says that you know the Pharaoh had magicians, um, and so uh, you know they copied some of the things that that Moses did. And so when he um, made his when, when God made Moses' staff turn into a snake, they did the same thing. Um, you know, and even though Moses the, the, the snake of God, you know, was better than the other snakes. It ate the other snakes up. Um, you know, the, the Pharaoh thought, oh, this isn't so bad. Um, you know, they were using their secret arts. But uh, when God started ramping up the intensity, they, they couldn't really keep up. You know, they were unable to copy the plagues. And they started to worry. They started to stress. I'm going to read now from Exodus 9, verse 13 to 19. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning, confront Pharaoh, and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go, so that they may worship me. Or this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you, and against your officials and your people so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. You still set yourself against my people and will not let them go. Therefore, at this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt. From the day it was founded till now. Give an order now and to bring all your livestock and everything you have in the field to a place of shelter, because the hail will fall on every person and animal that has not been brought in and is still out in the field, and they will die. So my first point this morning is that um, you know Pharaoh had been hardening his heart. Pharaohs, uh, you know, in, in that culture, they were considered gods on earth. You know, in the Egyptian culture, they were gods. Um, and obviously, the Lord our God did not like this, especially since this, this person who proclaimed himself a God was oppressing his people, the Israelites. God wanted to make it known that he is the one, and he alone is the one and only God, um, and show the people of Egypt that God needed to 
that, that they needed to change their ways. And so when Moses shows up and says, the real God says that you must let my people go, let his people go. Uh, Pharaoh was obviously uh, very confused. He, he was probably thinking to himself, the real God, but I'm, I'm a real God. I'm, I'm the real God here. Um, he had been brought up, you know, and uh, everyone was telling him that, that he was the God and that you know, no one ever said anything against that. Um, so he was probably really confused. Um, and then Moses, when Moses turned his staff into a snake, the Pharaoh thought, ha, huh, magicians are, are stronger than this. Um, you know, this isn't going to be too hot. Um, he made a big show about being so powerful and he's the most powerful God. Um, the secret was the Pharaoh was scared of the Israelites. He was scared of Moses. The fact that there were so many now of, of the Israelites, he, it worried him. He was worried that they were going to rise up against him and take away his power. That's why he ordered the killing of the firstborn sons, you know, when, when Moses was, was born, um, to make them easier to control. And then seven plagues later, uh, Moses tells Pharaoh, not only had his magicians failed, you know, Pharaoh himself couldn't even do anything, and he was supposed to be so, so powerful. Um, they, they couldn't even replicate what, what God was doing. Um, and that was just him getting started. We know that God just said he's going to now bring the full intensity. Um, he, wanted, he wanted Pharaoh to listen, to hear and he says, or oh, this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you and against your officials and your people. So you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. Imagine how scared these people would have been, the people of Egypt and even the Israelites. How scared they must have been. Now would have been freaking out if there were rivers of blood and ants and flies and, and, and everything like that, um, you know. Just imagine what they were thinking. Livestock falling dead in front of you. Painful boils on everyone. And Moses says this is just the beginning. I'm sure they were thinking to themselves, what if this time the plague does affect us? What if this time, you know, all those other plagues, maybe they were just a warning. Maybe maybe this next one is really going to gonna hit us hard. Um, We've seen all these all these things. We've seen hailstorms before. That you know, Moses is warning us now that the, the biggest hailstorm ever is going to come. We've seen the hailstorms. How do we know that this hailstorm is not going to kill us? How does hail know who's an Israelite and who isn't? Maybe Pharaoh himself is going to decide he's had enough of all of this and just come and kill us all um, and save himself the trouble. So we also need to remember that these people. Were slaves and they had that mindset and they were they'd been in that mindset for years they were probably just thinking what if scariest thing you can ever ask what if never ask yourself that because chances are you're going to come up with some ridiculous story for example what if tomorrow you bite into your ham sandwich that you slaved over or your mom slaved over or your dad i don't know who did it but there's dog hair in it and somehow it's wet I'll be okay guys what if you finally get the courage to talk to the girl of your dreams and somehow you just burp first thing you say you just burp hey Jessica I uh I really look I like you a, a lot sorry about that <laughs> And ladies, the reverse role. What if the guy of your dreams walks up very mysterious-like because you love the mysterious ones and says, I don't even know how to respond to that. Maybe it was accidental. We'll never know. What if you like gummy bears like these and they decide that they want to eat you, huh? Let me tell you, it's, it wouldn't be good. <coughs> it wouldn't be good. Not today. Not today. You're mine. I'm eating you, okay? What if it's report card day and you show your parents and they decide that's not good enough, so they decide to feed you like the dog and you have to eat on the ground. That's not fun. I've tried it. Look at your dog. 
He's not having a good time. That's why he's looking up at your food. What happens if aliens show up? Just randomly. What if they came for your Xbox, huh? No more Fortnite. What if they take your phones too? All sort of electronic devices where you can't play Fortnite anymore. Heaven forbid. You know what? Maybe that would be a good thing. What if? What if one of your friends actually dug a hole to China all the way through the earth and you actually fell in it? Would that be fun? Maybe for the first 30 seconds, then it might get boring and then it might get really hot. What would happen if you're lit like this for the rest of your life? No more good selfies. And you know what? What if you never become famous? What if no one really sees you? What if you lose your athletic skills? What if you lose your looks? What if you choose the wrong path? What if you worry so much you actually make yourself sick? Like you were saying in, in that, that clip, what if is a dangerous question. But if we stop looking at what if, what could go wrong, and start thinking and imagining what could go right with God on our side, then you will see a whole different side of the world. Okay, so my second point is now Pharaoh realized that he had a big problem. And he was going to do whatever it took to make the problem go away. He decided that he was going to try and fool Moses and, um, and God into thinking that he was really going to let the people go, let the Israelites go, um, just, to, just to make the hail stop and, and, and you know, hopefully then it would all go away. You know, this was a level of dis devastation that Egypt had never seen. The hail had demolished everything that it was left outside. Servants, animals, most of the crops. And it says in the Bible, the only place that it did not fall was the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were. So now Pharaoh has no food. He's lost whatever animals he had left. He's lost his servants and his, his trusted workers. And then his so-called powerful mag uh, magicians and his wise men were useless to him. He realized that this was something he probably couldn't handle. And he had a big problem. But he didn't want to lose his free slave labor. So he tried to fool Moses into thinking that, you know, he would just let the people go um, and, you know, the hail would stop and, and everyone would be happy. But Moses saw right through that plan. And he knew that the Pharaoh and his, his advisors um, were, were not being truthful um, and they had not learned their lesson but he also knew that God had a plan and he knew that he needed to, to let this play through um, to let let God's plan play through so Moses knew that no matter what no matter what plagues would come no matter what Pharaoh would, would decide that God would be would protect his people he would make sure that no harm would come to them Okay, we're going to read verse 27 and 29, 27 to 29. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron. This time I have sinned, he said to them. The Lord is in the right and I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord, for we have had enough thunder and hail. I will let you go. You don't have to stay any longer. Moses replied, when I have gone out of the city, I will spread my hands in prayer to the Lord. The thunder will stop. And there will be no more hail, so you may know that the earth that that the earth is the Lord's. It says in verse thirty-three to thirty-five. Then Moses left Pharaoh and went out of the city. He spread out his hands towards the Lord, and the thunder and the hail stopped. And when the rain no longer poured on the land, when Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and thunder had stopped, he sinned again, and his officials hardened. He and his officials hardened their hearts. So Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not let the Israelites go, just as the Lord said through Moses. Now, after this, we know that God hardened Pharaoh's heart for the other plagues that were still to come. Pharaoh had many chances to let the Israelites go, but he chose not to. And so God needed to show everyone who the one true God was. Even after such a terrifying hailstorm that came and went you know god's messenger puts his hand up and it starts hailing and then god's messenger prays and puts his hands up and it stops pharaoh still didn't let his people go he hardened his heart 
So God, God decided, fine, if this isn't enough, then, uh, then we're going to bring out the big guns. So he and Moses both knew that the Pharaoh and his wise men had not learned, learned to fear the retribution of God. This would not be the last of the plagues, as we know, for Egypt. God really had to ramp up the plagues for not only for Pharaoh, but for everyone to see that he is, a, he is God, to show his strength and his might. And people saw this and they started praying to him instead of other gods. He used the Pharaoh's evilness against him and he turned it into retribution for many, many people, especially for the Israelites. The true storm of the story was God's wrath against the evil of the Pharaoh um, and the, the corrupt people of Egypt. God remembered how they had killed the firstborn sons of the Israelites. And that's why he sent the angel of death to Egypt. And only those who had painted the, the blood of the lamb, uh, they slaughtered the lamb and they painted the blood over their, their door frames. Um, and only those, door, those houses that had been, been painted over with the blood of the lamb were passed over. And that's where the Passover comes from. That's where that term comes, comes from. And eventually that became what we know today is, as Easter, because Jesus came as the last and the final lamb, the perfect sacrifice. So, guys, I just want to just invite you to just remember, no matter how bad the storm gets, no matter how bad it may seem, God has a plan, and he will be there with us through the storm. So let's bow our heads and pray. We thank you, Lord, for your power. We thank you that no matter how bad it might get, that you will be there with us through the storm. No matter how dark the skies get, no matter how much fear there is in us, we know that you will be there with us. Jesus, we pray that even this, this storm that we are in now, this storm of coronavirus, will not let us turn from you. But let us turn towards you, Lord, and trust that you are here with us now. We thank you for everything you've done for us, and we know that there is so much more yet to come. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. Hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Um, really push into God this week. Um, and remember, if you need anything, you can always message me anytime. Um, yeah, so... Cheers.